There's just nothing else like a brain injury. There's lots of injuries to your body, but the brain is the center core of operating you know, your whole body for your whole life. Our brain has billions of neurons that combine to make trillions of connections responsible for our everyday function. Yet we often neglect the importance of giving our brain the proper rest it deserves. The challenge that comes with removal from play is an obstacle that is present for athletes of all sports. And there are various reasons that could lead to a player pushing through their symptoms in order to stay in the game. There's a lot of athletes in their teens are, are looking for scholarships, right? So they're, they're pushing for academics. Um, there could be a scout in the stand. There could be somebody there to watch them. And by all means, they, they don't want to stop if they've taken a knock after 10 minutes, right? They'll, they'll play through anything because they feel like a, a future is on the line for them. Having addressed the challenges of recognizing a concussion previously, we know that identifying this invisible injury is hard. And as the head trainer of the Peterborough Peets, Brian Miller has learned the importance of taking a more proactive approach with athletes that may have a suspected head injury. Personally, I put a lot of stock into uh, just having a conversation with the athlete, right? How are they interacting with me? Uh, how is their concentration, you know, in a conversation? If there seems to be any question, let's just, you know, pull them off. Let's get them out of that game environment and have that conversation, you know, to start with and then possibly, you know, uh, further assessment stuff uh, accordingly. Brian has been around young hockey athletes since the early 2000s. And even with his two decades of experience in the medical field, he still encounters challenges during this phase of removal. It's not always necessarily obvious. Sometimes it's a lot more subtle. So you've got to kind of look for basically a change in performance, a change in behavior, and sometimes that's indicated by their teammates. Acknowledging the role teammates can play in this process is critical since they are usually the ones who see the individual the most. You know that person, you know how they act, you know how they play, you're their family. And so you see something going up with them, something that's even a little bit off, tell somebody. Grace Sanderson has played rugby her whole life. And although she's never personally experienced a concussion, some kind of a gamble that you don't really want to take with your brain. It's hard, right? You don't want to be that teammate that goes and tattles or tells to the coaches or to the trainer that, listen, I think so-and-so has some concussion. They need to be removed from play or something needs to happen. But ultimately, it's for the betterment of that player. And so if you truly suspect somebody has a concussion, and they're refusing to go seek help for it, you need to tell a trainer, you need to tell a coach, you need to tell their parents. As a teammate, it's hard to carry that weight of responsibility for your friend's removal. But understanding the significance of this role and how it can help them is essential. Although the challenges don't end there, and for many athletes, getting removed from their sport can take its toll on other aspects of their life. So many intricacies that play especially in team sports because you get to a certain level and if you're not performing, you're not dressing. You get to a certain level and if you're injured, it's so hard to come back into the team at that same level that you left with. This was certainly the case for 2016 Rio Olympic bronze medalist Hannah Darling, who suffered a concussion while playing in a game for the Canadian rugby development team. It was devastating to me just because I didn't know how long I was going to play. I didn't know if I was going to lose a spot. I didn't, I, it's a lot of, I don't know. And then just being away from rugby, like it, it's tough because that's what I wanted to do. Like that's what I was being trained to do was play rugby and just kind of feeling that you're falling behind because you're not training every single day. You're not, and you kind of like worry about what's happening to your body and just wondering like, when can I get back out there? When can I get back out there? But then second guessing yourself, you're like, am I all right? This I don't know mentality Hannah is referring to doesn't just impact the athlete, but also the medical staff assessing the individual. You know, there are no cookie cutter answers as far as, well, how long is the athlete going to be out? I can't tell you. What I can tell you is what's happening right now here today, what our game plan will be, and how we'll keep updating you and communicating with you as far as the process goes. The ambiguity surrounding the recovery process can bring its own set of stress and mental health complications. 
And this is where a coach can really step up in the return to play process by reassuring their athletes on the importance of prioritizing their health. For me, it's more, let's, let's err on the side of caution. Let's, let's see what's really going on here. Let's have a look at it. Um, the players will tell you, I'm okay, give me a couple more minutes, let's do this. And I, I think it's just best to stop, reset, assess the situation and, and see really if there is something wrong. Having this approach to removal is pivotal and research indicates athletes who continue to play through their concussions took twice as long to recover than those who were removed immediately. Unfortunately, the reality is not all coaches are capable of providing that sense of reassurance that Scott Coburn does. And as a parent, you are entrusting them with the responsibility and safety of your kids. I think the relationship between the parent and the coach is very important. It needs to be a trustful relationship because I'm entrusting you with my child and to take care of him and to ensure his safety while on the ice. Amy Schwanda is a mother of two kids that love to play sports. And she understands the level of trust she has to give coaches to ensure her kids' safety. However, because of the complex nature associated with concussion, if that coach doesn't have a comprehensive understanding of the injury, it could lead to a number of concussions being missed at all levels of play. It was when he was so sensitive to the noise that I kind of picked up on it and I thought maybe he has a concussion, but the coaches are telling me that no, he's fine. So I felt kind of guilty not being aware of that first one he got and he continued to play and that accelerated his second concussion. Amy's concern is valid and the personal guilt she experienced with her son's injury is a result of a failed team approach to concussion management. The same can be said, on the other hand, where these roles are reversed. And in Scott's experience as a soccer coach, he's had to deal with parents that were upset because of their kids' removal. Sometimes with young athletes, the parents can be the, uh, the toughest factor because they don't want their own kid to stop because the, the parents are invested in the winning culture as well too. So I think that's where it becomes important to talk to them, see how they're feeling, assess them, pull them out. But uh, it, it can be difficult uh, taking an athlete away from the game for a quick rest or a test and having the parents, my kid has to get back in there. We have to win this game. It is this tricky dynamic between the coach, parent and athlete that often creates a lot of tension in the overall removal process. The coach you know, will definitely have concern uh, for their athlete and, and want them back as, as part of the team and helping the team and going towards that, that goal of winning. And, you know, the parents probably more so about the long-term health of, of their child. But again, um, the more everybody is educated about it, the, the better. To Brian's point, education is an essential component that helps with the long-term health of athletes by ensuring they are removed from play. Removing the athlete when we've recognized the injury is critical for the overall recovery process. And evidently, so is having an ecosystem of support that prioritizes the health and safety of the individual. It's better to be proactive, go that extra step, even if it turns out to be nothing, right? Like nobody's ever going to be mad for saying, hey, listen, you're probably right, I should go sit out. And worst case scenario, it's nothing and they're perfectly fine. Best case scenario, you have just saved them a whole lot of world of hurt. The things that I felt like I did was getting myself educated on what a concussion was. And that was empowering for me as a parent to know everything that I can about it. I would have a hard time living with myself if I didn't pull a player out and something went seriously wrong where they were hospitalized or, or even worse. The overall health of the player is, is always the number one thing. And, you know, as everybody knows, you know, you, you only got one brain, right? It's not a knee, it's not a joint. You got one and it's part of our commitment as uh, health providers to uh, you know, use the knowledge that we have, the assessments that we have and, and try and make the best decision that we feel for the long-term health of the, of the athletes.